Hello, welcome to the first video in a series of videos looking at the line integral. My name is Nakai Rimmer, helping you through this multivariable calculus journey, and we're entering into the area of vector calculus, and it starts with trying to get a good understanding of what a line integral is. To start with the basics, there are two main elements that make up a line integral. First off, you're going to have a curve. In this video, we'll talk about curves in general and how you can parametrize some basic curves. And then the second element of a line integral is a function. Now that function might come at you in a couple of ways. The function could be a scalar function, a multivariable function of x and y, perhaps x, y, and z. And um, the second way that a function could come at you, it could be part of a vector field and the vector field dotted with some other potential um, basically the uh, vector field uh, will be dotted with the derivative the 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 tangent vector to the curve unit tangent vector all right so um, we'll look at both viewpoints not in this video but I just wanted to let you know what generally what the integral looks like and so we'll have the same integration symbol that you had back in um, previous calculus classes and underneath though you have a C this is the to denote the curve inside you have your function f of x y or perhaps f of x y z and then there's this element at the end called ds and that's a piece of arc length and so uh, in 2d and and so that's what we're going to have as the representation of a line integral and from the scalar perspective view and then from the vector field perspective view, we're going to look at having a vector field dotted with the basically the derivative of our path, parameterized path. All right, let's focus in on curves. This whole video is going to be about curves. All right, so first up is um, what exactly does it mean to parameterize your curve? It's, it's to write the, the x and y, or perhaps x, y, and z, as a function of t call it time and and so we're going to need some things to be true about our functions in order for us to be able to um, calculate line integrals on those functions um, we would like for the curve to be smooth the entire curve now if you've created these functions f of t and g of t that stand for what x is going to be and what y is going to be then we're going to need those functions to, um, to have derivatives that exist and we need those derivatives to be continuous that's technically what it means for the curve to be smooth now if the entire curve isn't smooth like the one we have here then what we can have then is the curve could be smooth in pieces you know made up of finite number of smooth pieces it's possible that the curve could be closed what that means is that the starting point and ending point is at the same place we want to even dig deeper though and and tag uh, this type of curve as a simple closed curve simple in the fact that it doesn't cross over itself okay and then here's an example of a you know a figure eight curve it crosses over itself if we encounter these we can deal with them but we're gonna have to break it up into two separate closed curves and so we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it uh if we get to it at all no worries but uh, for the most part our curves are going to be smooth or piecewise smooth and if they are closed they're going to be simple and closed all right great on top of just the idea of you know having a curve the curve needs to have um an orientation to it a starting point and an ending point and so um if we're going in the general direction of the curve we call that curve c if we'd like to travel backwards along the curve we call that curve negative c now let's dig into some basic parameterizations. Okay, first up, uh, just the idea is that you're coming up with functions of t, and then you have to say what t lives between, the starting t and the ending t. And then what you do with these individual functions is you throw them into a vector, and you, you title, or you give that vector the variable r. That should be a bold r. Okay, it's a vector. And it is your space curve. We've seen it before in vector functions. It, it tells you exactly where you are in space, a vector who starts at the origin and points to exactly all the curves that are, uh, all the points that are on your curve. 
All right, so let's parameterize a horizontal line. We're going to go from 0 to 2 along the x-axis. Now, when you have parameterizations, they're not unique. Two people could come up with two different parameterization, parameterizations of the same curve. Okay, so when I give you a parameterization, what I'm giving you is just a, a standard way of parameterizing it. But if you come up with a different way, that's perfectly fine too. Okay, so the standard way of parameterizing traveling along the x-axis, uh, well, all points on the x-axis have y equal to zero. So if you come up with a function for y, it's got to be the fact that y is zero. Now for x, what you could do is just let x be equal to t. And then whatever x does is what t does. x has a starting point and x has an ending point. For us, it's going to be x starts at 0 and x ends at 2. So then t is going to start at 0 and end at 2. We can take these two parts, throw them into a vector, call that vector r, and here is a... Okay, here is a video of the animation. Uh, a video of the parameterization uh, traveling along that curve from x equals 0 to x equals 2. All right, okay, great. Now let's uh, move to a, a second parameterization. Let's say that you know the function f of x that you are traveling along y equals f of x. So an example, it would be y equals the root x as x goes from 0 to 9. Whenever you know the function f of x, then what you're going to do is let x be equal to t and then y is going to be equal to the formula on t. So x is t and y is root t. Throw those into a, a vector field. Uh, th I mean, sorry, throw those into a curve and, and always say what t does. t does what x does. So in this particular case, because you let x be equal to t, so t goes from 0 to 9. All right, and here's the animation. As t goes from 0 to 9, you're traversing along the curve. Okay, so if it's generically some other function, just y should be equal to that other function, but it's going to be of t instead of of x. All right, great. Next up, a circle. Generally, x squared plus y squared equals a squared. Um, but we've seen this before. We just use polar to parameterize it. Let x equal r cosine t. In this case, r is a. So let x equal a cosine t, and then y would be equal to a sine t. You traverse along the circle, center at the origin of radius a. So I have r of t is equal to 3 cosine t, 3 sine t, putting those guys into a vector, that's your space curve, as t goes from 0 to 2 pi. There's the picture of uh, when you let a equal 3, and here is the animation <laughs> traversing along the circle. Okay. All right, great. Uh, next up then, if you can parameterize a circle, then you can parameterize an ellipse. Okay, generic equation of an ellipse is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. The a and the b, square roots of those denominators, end up being your, um, your, the length of your, or half the length at least, of your major and your minor axis. Okay, and the parameterization is very similar to the parameterization for a circle. Because a and b are different in the ellipse, so then instead of x equals the a or the, um, instead of x equal r cosine t, now x equal a cosine t, just like before, but now y equals b sine t. So for example, um, x equals 4 cosine t and y equals 6 sine t. As t goes from 0 to 2 pi, that doesn't change from circle to ellipse. t is going to start at 0 and the 2 pi here and center at the origin. It really isn't a center to an ellipse, but anyway, we have the um, the foci of the ellipse. But here we go with the picture where um, a is equal to 4 and b is equal to 6. And so this is the equation x squared over 16 plus y squared over 36 should be equal to 1. And now traverse along this curve. The curve is built in the vector function r of t. Okay, great. Next up, let's go 3D. Enough of flat world. Let's go 3D. And so we're going to have a circular helix where it's going to be x equals a cosine t and y equals a sine t. But z, a third variable, which represents the distance off the xy plane, is going to be equal to t. Okay. 
in this particular uh, drawing, I'm going to have um, a b equal to one. Okay, and uh, I'm going to let t go below the uh, x y plane. Let t start at minus pi, and we're going to traverse. I don't know if the picture. I don't know if the animation will traverse from below to above the xy plane, but let's take a look at it. The point P traveling along the circular helix. Will it go under the xy plane? I forgot the, oh yeah, good. There you go. All right, great. And then finally, we have two points in space and you wanna travel from one point to the other. This is in three space. So your one point's x naught, y naught, z naught. Your other point is x1, y1, z1. Well, just remember what we did back in when we talked about equations of lines and planes. We said that, well, if that's the case, then uh, there's got to be a point that's on the line and there's got to be a direction vector to the line. And so if, if x0, y0, z0 is your starting point and x1, y1, z1 is your ending point, then the vector part of it would be x1 minus x0 and y1 minus y0 and z1 minus z0. That would be the direction vector part. And then x0, y0, z0 will be the point that you can use. If you choose the starting point and then you choose to find the vector from the ending point to the starting point or just uh, the vector that helps you uh, traverse along that curve from some other point to the, to the starting point, then um, you can be sure that x is uh, t will go from zero to one. You throw these all in a vector. We didn't do that with our lines, but we could have. And so here is an example. We're going to go from the point three two one to the point negative one eight seven. So we're going to have x y z. It's going to be equal to three two one, and then the difference there negative one minus three and eight minus two and seven minus one, and then. There's no guessing game. We know that t is going to go from 0 to 1. When t is 0, we're at 3, 2, 1. And when t is 1, we have it set up so that we're at the other point, negative 1, 8, 7. Okay. Throw them into a vector. And then here's the traversing of that. Oh, wait. Sorry about that. But yeah, it just moves from the blue point to the green point. All right, great. All right, let's stop this video now. That's enough talking about curves. In the next video, we're going to break into the two different functions. We're going to have a whole, whole video just on looking at the scalar function viewpoint of a line integral with one example. And then we're going to have a bunch of videos based on looking at the line integral as a vector uh, function dotted with the, um, the position curves uh, derivative. All right, let's go ahead and end the video there. Thank you so much. Uh, please comment down below, uh, like, and subscribe. and um, let me know if you have any questions, reach out to me, make your way to my webpage for extra resources, calccoach.com, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.